Kristen competes in the Airs tournament. In his first joust he defeats a knight of House Tali. He then defeats Lord Bormund and another Baratheon. Kristen next faces Prince Demon Targaryen after several evenly matched tilts. Demon is unhorsed by him, with Demon then demanding a contest of arms on foot. Kristen readies his flail as the prince draws his sword Dark Sister. In fierce combat, Kristen breaks apart Demon's shield, with Demon swinging at his breastplate in return. With the prince eventually kicking Kristen to the ground and as Demon gloats, Kristen rises to his feet and knocks him to the ground and forces the prince to yield. After his victory, Kristen asks for the favor of Princess Rhaenyra Targaryen, who obliges throwing her laurel wreath down to him and wishes him luck. Six months after the tourney Sir Kristen is named to the Kingsguard, at the insistence of Princess Rhaenyra, as he is the only candidate who has real combat experience. He later travels to Dragonstone with a detachment of men led by Sir Otto Hightower, the Hand of the King, to force Prince Demon to give up his occupation of the castle. When Demon, accidentally, calls him, Sir Crispin, Kristen retorts by reminding Demon of how he defeated him at the Heirs Tournament. The situation escalates, and both sides draw their swords, but Princess Rhaenyra arrives and manages to convince Demon to return the dragon egg without bloodshed. Three years later, King Viserys organizes a royal hunt in the Kingswood, in honor of his son Aegon's second name day. Before departure, the king approaches Sir Criston, asking after the whereabouts of Rhaenyra, but Criston confesses he doesn't know where she is. Later, at the camp in the Kingswood, Criston sees Rhaenyra storm out of the tent and ride off on her horse. He swiftly mounts his own horse and chases after her. He manages to catch her, and she tells him that her father was trying to marry her off to Lord Jason Lannister. Criston jokingly asks if she wants him to kill Jason, which seems to amuse Rhaenyra. He tells her they should return to camp, but she suggests they take in the Kingswood. As they walk, Rhaenyra asks him if he was ever betrothed, to which he confesses that his station was never high enough for a formal betrothal, though he could have married a common-born girl had he wished. Rhaenyra tells him he's lucky to have a say in his own life, as despite being the princess, she feels she has no real power. Kristen reminds her that it was only because of her that he became a Kingsguard, the highest honor any member of his house has ever known. That night, as he and Rhaenyra sit by a fire, Kristen requests once again, that they return to camp, as her father will be worried, but she is still unwilling. Rhaenyra asks him if he thinks the people will ever truly accept her as their ruler, to which he replies that they will have no choice but to. At that moment, there is a rustling in the nearby bushes. Kristen pulls out his sword, preparing to defend his princess from danger. After a tense silence, a boar charges out of the bushes, knocking Kristen over, and attacking Rhaenyra. Kristen recovers, and runs the boar through with his sword, saving his princess, who finishes the beast off by stabbing it multiple times in rage. As the two of them head back to camp with their kill, they are approached by another animal, a white heart. Kristen slowly draws his sword, but Rhaenyra softly tells him not to. He obeys, and the stag turns and runs off. When they return to camp with the dead boar, they are greeted by incredulous stares from everyone gathered. Some time later, Sir Criston accompanies Princess Rhaenyra on a tour to find potential suitors for her hand. During an audience at Storm's End, Rhaenyra dismisses every suitor that approaches, and when a fight breaks out between Willem Blackwood and Gerald Bracken, she tells Criston that they're leaving, and orders him to have their ship prepared to return to King's Landing, even though the tour was supposed to continue on to Bitterbridge. As they are leaving, they hear a yell, and turn to see that Willem has run Gerald through with his sword. Kristen tells Rhaenyra to look away. As they sail back to King's Landing, Rhaenyra asks Kristen if she thinks her father will be angry, to which Kristen sarcastically asks whether she refers to her refusal of all the suitors or her ending the tour early. Just then, they hear a dragon's cry overhead. Kristen orders everyone to take cover, before Caraxes swoops down, brushing their ship, and dangerously rocking it. Kristen immediately checks on the princess, and calls for the maesters, but Rhaenyra insists she's fine. That night, Kristen bids Rhaenyra goodnight and stands guard outside her bedroom door. Several hours later, much to his bewilderment, Rhaenyra, who, unbeknownst to him, had slipped out of her room through a secret passage and joined Demon for a night on the town, enters her bedroom again, now dressed as a commoner. As he checks to make sure she's all right, 
Rhaenyra, sexually charged from her exploits with Demon, playfully grabs his helmet from him and holds it out of reach, despite his impatient requests that she return it. Eventually, she holds it out to him, and kisses him when he moves to take it, stunning him. Ignoring his half-hearted protests, Rhaenyra begins to slowly strip Kristen of his armor. Kristen hesitates, looking meaningfully at his white cloak as he takes it off, torn between his vow of chastity and his desire for, and reluctance to disobey, his princess. Eventually, he gives in to temptation and starts kissing her back, and they share a night of ecstasy. The next morning, Kristen, visibly uncomfortable after the previous night's encounter, enters Rhaenyra's chambers to give her a summons from Queen Alicent Hightower. That evening, Kristen and several other members of the King's Guard escort Rhaenyra to her father's chambers. Kristen is visibly nervous as he opens the door for her. Kristen accompanies Rhaenyra, Viserys, and the new king's hand, Lord Lionel Strong, to Driftmark, to propose a marriage to Lord Corlys Velaryon between Rhaenyra and his son Sir Laenor Velaryon. On the way back, Kristen, still guilt-ridden over breaking his king's guard vow, approaches Rhaenyra, and asks her to run away with him to Essos, where she could marry him, a marriage for love, not duty. As Rhaenyra has often talked about how much she hates her position, Kristen believes this would benefit both of them. She would get to do as she wishes, and he could escape the shame of breaking his vow. After a few seconds of silence, however, Rhaenyra refuses, saying that she doesn't want to live in infamy, and must do her duty, no matter how much she may hate it. She does, however, inform him that she and Lainor have come to an understanding. After they perform their royal duty, they each pursue their own desires. Kristen, distraught and angry, accuses her of wanting to make him his whore. He gave up his honor and soiled his white cloak, the only thing he has to his name, for Rhaenyra, and with her refusal, he now sees no way of restoring it. Upon returning to King's Landing, Kristen is summoned by Queen Alicent, who questions him about a rumor she heard that Rhaenyra had been involved in a breach of morals. Unbeknownst to him, the rumor she refers to is that Rhaenyra had sex with her uncle Demon but Kristen believes that she has learned about his own sexual encounter with Rhaenyra. Seeing one last chance to restore his honor in death, Kristen confesses his sin, only asking for a merciful death. Alicent, however, merely thanks him for his honesty and dismisses him. Throughout the welcoming feast for Rhaenyra and Lainor's marriage, Kristen stands by, watching them dance together, visibly on edge. He is approached by Sir Joffrey Lunmouth, who subtly admits to being Lainor's paramour and hints that he knows Kristen's secret. Joffrey tells Kristen that they should swear to guard the two of them and their secrets for the sake of them all. This perceived threat pushes Kristen over the edge, and he starts pummeling Joffrey, to the shock and horror of everyone gathered. When Lainor tries to pull him off, Kristen punches him before proceeding to beat Joffrey to death, caving in the entire left side of his face. After staring down at his victim for a few seconds, Kristen silently rises and walks out, everyone too terrified to stop him. Kristen walks out to the godswood, removing his white cloak and his sword, and with his honor now beyond repair and nothing else to live for, prepares to take his own life with his dagger. However, his suicide attempt is interrupted by Queen Alicent who calls out to him. A decade later, Kristen is now a firm ally of Queen Alicent in return for her saving him at his lowest. While operating as a master at arms for Rhaenyra and Alicent's sons, Kristen intentionally allows Aegon, Alicent's eldest son, to rockhouse Jacqueries Velaryon, Rhaenyra's eldest son. When Harwin Strong intervenes, Kristen alludes to the rumor that Jacqueries and his brothers Lucerys and Joffrey are Harwin's bastard sons, which provokes Harwin to start beating him.